Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about radius of gyration. You might have heard of this term radius of gyration from the chapter system of particles and rotation. But what exactly is radius of gyration? In this video, we'll learn exactly about that. So the radius of gyration of a body about a given axis is the distance from the axis at which the entire mass of the body can be assumed to be concentrated to produce the same moment of inertia as the actual distribution of mass. Now, this definition seems a little bit complicated. So in order to make it easier for us to understand, let us derive an expression for radius of gyration. Now, radius of gyration is denoted by k and it has the same units as that of length. So the SI unit would be meters. It could also be represented in centimeters. Let's assume this AB is our axis of rotation and this entire system is rotating in this direction. Now, let's also assume that this system contains n masses in such a way that let's say this, this is let's say m1, this is m2, this is m3, this is mn, such that this m1 is at r1 distance away from the axis, this is at r2 distance, this is at r3 distance, and this is at let's say rn distance. Now, first of all, let's find the moment of inertia of this system about this particular axis. So, moment of inertia of a single point mass is given by m r square. Now, since here there are multiple point masses, so I can say the moment of inertia of this system would be equal to m into r1 square plus m into r2 square plus m into r3 square and so on till m into r n square. Now, the reason I am writing m instead of m1, m2, m3 is because I am assuming that all the masses are same. Now, I can simply write as moment of inertia is equal to, I can take m common in this and it would be r1 square plus r2 square till r n square. Exactly at this step, I can multiply with n and divide this entire thing with n, where n is the number of these point masses. If you look at this very carefully, so m times n would be the total mass of the system, right? Because the system contains n point masses of having the mass m each. So the entire mass of the system would become capital M. Now, this would be simply multiplied with r1 square plus r2 square till rn square divided by n. And this would be the total moment of inertia. Let's say for this entire system, the radius of gyration is k. Now, as per the definition of radius of gyration, we can say that i would be equal to m k square. Because if you go through the definition once again, it says the radius of gyration about a given axis is the distance from the axis at which the entire mass of the body can be assumed. So the entire mass of our body is capital M. Uh, is assumed to be concentrated to produce the same moment of inertia. Now, the moment of inertia that we have found out here, I just need to equate it with this moment of inertia because these are the same. So, I can say mk square should be equal to this entire thing. So, I'm equating this entire thing with mk square, where k is the radius of gyration, m and m gets cancelled. So, I can simply write that radius of gyration that is k is equal to under root of r1 square plus r2 square till rn square divided by n. Now, if you carefully see, this expression is nothing but root mean square distance. So, we can redefine the radius of gyration as radius of gyration is indeed equivalent to the root mean square rms distance of a body's particle from its axis of rotation. It's a measure of how mass is distributed around that axis and larger the radius of gyration would mean the mass is spread further out. Let's find a general expression for radius of gyration. So I can say that let's say i is the moment of inertia. So this would be equal to m into k square where k is the radius of gyration. So from here I can say k square equals to i divided by the mass of the body. So the k that is the radius of gyration would be under root of i divided by mass, where i is the moment of inertia and capital M is the mass of the body. 
let's understand the factors on which the radius of gyration depends so the first factor on which the radius of gyration depends is the position and direction of axis of rotation so if you change the position and the direction of axis of rotation the radius of gyration would change and also if the distribution of mass about the axis of rotation change the radius of gyration also changes now let's understand this concept of radius of gyration with the help of some sample questions now the first sample question is a circular ring of mass m and the outer radius r has a uniform mass distribution determine the radius of gyration about its central axis so let's say this is a circular ring so about the central axis we know the moment of inertia of the circular ring that is i it simply equals to m into r square where m is the mass of this ring and r is the outer radius of this ring now as per the definition the radius of gyration k is equal to under root of i divided by mass so now let's use the same formula so radius of gyration would be equal to under root of instead of i we can write m r square divided by mass mass and mass gets cancelled so this comes out to be under root of r that would be uh, sorry under root of r square that would be r so in this case the radius of gyration would be simply equal to the radius of the ring let's try another sample question so the question says three masses m1 2 kg m2 3 kg and m3 5 kg are located at the distance 1 3 and 5 from a given axis let's say this is our given axis and the masses so m1 is 2 kg that is located at a distance 1 meters m2 is 3 kg so let's say this is m2 3 kg located at 3 meters and m3 that is 5 kg is located at 5 meters so let's say this is 5 kg located at 5 meters from this particular axis now the question asks find the radius of gyration about that axis so we know the formula for radius of gyration is equal to under root of i by m where i is the moment of inertia and m is the mass now total mass of the system capital m would be simply equal to the sum of all these masses so it would be 2 plus 3 plus 5 so that would give us 10 kilograms now let's find the moment of inertia of all these masses about this particular axis so the total moment of inertia would be equal to summation m r square we can simply write this as 2 into 1 square plus 3 into 3 square plus 5 multiply by 5 square so this comes out to be so this would be 2 plus this would come out to be 27 plus this would come out to be 125 so this entire thing would come out to be 154 kg meter square for the last step we just need to use this formula and put the values of capital m and the moment of inertia in this formula so we can simply say that the radius of gyration k would be equal to under root of i is coming out to be 154 divided by total mass that is coming out to be 10 so this will come out to be under root of 15.4 that would be roughly equal to 3.92 meters so this is the radius of gyration so i hope this video helped you to understand the radius of gyration see you in the next video till then bye bye